attack. But he didn't die of a heart attack. Now, that was initially heart attack. Now, no heart attack. All you do is inject 60 milliliters of air in, in a syringe into any vein. causes the chambers of the heart to fill with air, which causes a heart attack. And that's known as a pulseless electrical activity heart attack. And it's another form of a cardiac arrest. The only thing that's left behind is a needle mark, a pinprick. However, since it's in El Paso and there's been no autopsy, forget about it. You know, I mean, they could find a vein in an unusual part of the body. Small enough gauge needle is used. Forget about that. The needle mark would be barely noticeable. If the coroner is not as careful as he, she should be, what coroner? There was no coroner. He called it in. He called it in from saying he was sh shooting tequila shots somewhere in a bar on the border. All right, just say he died of a heart attack. Now, don't bother me. I got Graciela here on one arm. See, I, I write in my head like it's like a touch of evil, more than a touch of evil. It's not even a dollop of evil. This is more than a dollop of evil. We'll change the title from a touch of evil. We'll go from Orson Welles to Orson Savage. From a touch of evil to a pound of evil in one generation. Oh, let me take this call. John on WABC, you're dying to tell us how to kill somebody. Go ahead, please. Oh, Michael, years ago I knew a girl who had dated a, an assassin. The assassin who was, um, you know, he was a guy that if he got caught, no one would take responsibility for him. And she said, whenever you hear about a public official dying in their sleep, dying in their pajamas, they inject something into the toothpaste. And it's after they brush their teeth. I don't know what the chemical was, but she said that's how they do it. And she goes, always be suspicious when an ambassador or a senator dies in his sleep. And it's all of a sudden, oh, he had a heart attack. It's like, well, he had no, no he, we, didn't, we didn't know he was in bad health. Why would he just... Well, but they wouldn't even do an autopsy. There was no medical examiner. We don't even know. There was no investigation. The minute they said, I was watching Manchurian Candidate Saturday night on Channel 13, and... Then the news broke for Scalia, and I go, oh, my God, it's like our, you know, the intent is... Would you, do you believe this government is, is corrupt enough to do a thing like this? I think someone could hire someone to do that. Why would he suddenly die in his sleep? And if he was on a hunting trip, you know he had to get a good bill of health. And now they're not doing the autopsy. I definitely thought something... I thought something before... They said they're not doing an autopsy, but then when I heard they're not right, well, Let's roll the clock back. It's now, it's 17 minutes after hour number two of the Savage Nation on this sleepy Monday. For an hour and seven, 15 minutes, I've been talking about all the pieces that don't add up. Don't you think that there are sufficient grounds for doubt that there should be a federal investigation like a Warren Commission, like they did for JFK? Well, no, I think they should do an autopsy. I mean, whatever it is. Why would well, of course, they're going to bury him without an autopsy. It'll be, it'll be too late. <clears throat> but I've seen enough of these shows where they in, in, disinter the body, right? Yeah, they're going to burn it. It's going to be ashes. Oh God, don't say that. No, I think not. I think he's a, ca a very devout Catholic. They don't. They don't do the burn. They don't do the burn. They do the burial. They don't. They don't fry. It's. It's not funny. I mean, but the whole thing's crazy now. It's getting nuts by the minute. Listen, if there is a cremation, it's over. If the family orders a cremation, which is very unusual for a devout Catholic family, priests, are there any priests in the audience? How common is cremation today amongst devout Catholics as opposed to burial? My knowledge is very, very low percentage. It's against the Catholic Church, cremation, so far as I know. Listen to me. I'm express. I'm sorry, what did you just say? It's a people he talks to me on the phone. Instead of sending me a message, this is what I got to put up with. Another one walks in the house and says, here's your yogurt. I never saw anything like this, what I got to put up with. But when I'm an average guy with a very good, keen, investigative mind, extremely capable of thinking, extremely capable of reasoning, with tremendous educational, a tremendous educational background, but an ordinary guy in so many ways, an ordinary man says something stinks to high heaven here. That's what America wants an answer to. Back in a minute, Trump at 30 after. All right, in a few minutes, Donald Trump joins us to talk about the debates the other night. And he's in a huge fight with uh, um, Teddy, not my dog, Teddy Cruz. He claims Teddy Cruz is uh, lying 
and that Teddy Cruz is a liar. He lies about everything Donald says. He says Teddy Cruz is such an unstable individual that he's thinking of suing him, and he's going to be on this show to talk about it. So this is a big fight, and I wish it didn't happen, but it happened. The, the fight is on, and the only one laughing is Hillary Clinton, but it happened. Now, to get back to the Scalia situation. <laughs> Someone says, here are the scenarios being floated by his pals in Washington, D.C. One, Hussein nominates Joe Biden, who has enough friends in the Senate to win easily. Two, Hussein nominates a super left winger, sure to lose and tie things up until he hopes Hillary wins and names him, Obama, to the Supreme Court. Yes, Justice Barack Hussein Obama becomes justice. Scenario three. I'm hearing again that neither Bernie nor Hillary will get this nomination. She will drop out as FBI closes in and that Biden gets tapped. He's been tapped from day one. And, of course, if Trump wins South Carolina, we, we will certainly have President Donald, which we all are praying for, the only chance to save America. That's it. That's it for the hour two already, half of it. I don't know where to tell you. To, this is awful, this whole thing. The minute I heard it, my gut, my gut hurt me. The only thing we had left was that razor-thin margin. And the champion of that razor-thin margin of sanity was Justice Scalia, who just a few days ago knocked Hussein in the teeth with his, with his uh, green gangsterism. He kicked him in the teeth. He knocked his, the guts out of him. He couldn't deliver. And he's dead now. Don't put two and two together. You're liable to get four. Donald Trump in a few minutes. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up. Please rise. The next president of the United States of America joins us to talk about the deceitful Republican National Committee and the imbalanced Ted Cruz. Donald Trump, welcome to the Savage Nation. This is quite a dust-up. It's, it's amazing to see what's going on here. It's amazing, actually, Michael. I've, you know, I've always uh, dealt with people that I've had some real bad ones in my life, but I've, I haven't seen people like this that would <laughs> lie to this extent and then you also see the way that room was set up the other night where everybody in the room, and I heard I won the debate. Everybody tells me I won, but, you know, the room was such a setup. It was ridiculous. All the every, every time you said a word, you got booed. What, were they all Cruz supporters? They were, they were No, they were mostly, not actually for Cruz, they were mostly for Bush. You know, he has $148 million. That's all he has. He's got the $148 million, but nothing going. And uh, they were no, I, I watched you and Bush, and, you know, i got to tell you something. This guy is so weak, it was embarrassing to see him up there. He looked like he was going to break into tears. And the best retort of the night, Donald, was when he said, my mother's the strongest woman I ever met. You said, then she ought to run. I agree with you. Barbara Bush should be running, not him. It's, it's a crazy thing. And look, he's not, a, he's not a good candidate. But, you know, because of the connections, he has $140 million. Most of it's been wasted. So let's see where he goes after this. So what's what, Donald? I need to come back to the topic we've been all screaming about here, which is Scalia. Was he murdered? I know it's pretty brutal to say that, and I'm not. I'm not wanting to drag you into this, but this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I went on the air and said we need a, the equivalent of a Warren Commission. We need an immediate autopsy before the body is disposed of. What do you think of that? Well, I just heard today, and then just a little while ago, actually. You know, I, I just landed, and I'm hearing it's a big topic. That uh, the question. And it's a horrible topic, but they say they found the pillow on his face, which is a pretty unusual place to find a pillow. Uh, I, I can't tell you what, uh, I can't give you an answer. You know, usually I like to give you answers, but I literally just heard it a little while ago. It's just starting to come out now, as you know, Michael. All right. Well, I've been covering it for an hour and a half. There's a lot more to it than that. There was no medical examiner present. There was no one who declared the death that was there. It was done by telephone from a, 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 a U.S. marshal appointed by, by Obama himself. So let me not try to drag you into something you haven't studied because I don't think it would be fair to you and to the audience. I, I think after you look into these facts, Donald, you yourself will have to come to some different conclusions than, than, you, than you may think. But let's go into the lies of Senator 
I'm reading your headline. Donald J. Trump responds to the lies of Senator Cruz and warns of legal action. Please tell the audience what that's about. Well, everything that I, I've never seen a guy like this, he'll take something. For instance, you know, because you've covered me a long time, that I'm very strong on guns and, and Second Amendment, right? And yes. he'll say, Donald Trump does not believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, I'm pro-life. They'll say, Donald Trump isn't pro-life. I'm, you know, Common Core. you got to end it. We want to end Common Core, bring education to local. He'll say, Donald Trump likes Common Core. I've never seen anything like it where somebody will just take whatever he wants to say, whatever the voters maybe don't like, and just say that's what he likes. Now, at the end of, and don't forget, he did this with Carson, with Ben Carson. He said, Ben Carson has left the race. Everybody vote for me. And they've dragged people into the voting halls, and thousands of votes went to him, in the opinion of many. So, I mean, and then he voted. He did a voter violation form, which is like a fraudulent document. Like, I've never seen a guy who cheats like this. It's unbelievable. And what he says is, you know, he just make things up. He'll take a topic, Michael, and just say you're the opposite. But you know, like like on guns and Second Amendment, I've been very strong on Second Amendment. And I have my I have my whole policy out there. Everybody knows it, and they certainly hear it with the speeches. And he'll say, "Oh, he doesn't believe in the Second Amendment." You know, so uh, I have never seen. So I figured I better have a news conference because I don't want him to do what he did to Carson. He apologized after the election to Carson. That doesn't help. Donald, look, you come from a very tough background as a contractor in New York City which anyone in the building trades will know is the toughest place on earth to get anything done. You build these amazing skyscrapers. You redevelop railroad yards over a 30-year period. So you've dealt with some really tough hombres over your life. Have you ever seen anything as dirty as politics in your entire life? No, politics is dirty. Cruz is a liar, and I've dealt with liars before, but this one's about the worst I've dealt with. Uh, and, you know, he holds up the Bible, Michael, and says, like, you know, he's this great Christian, but, uh, you know, great Christians don't lie. And he, uh, you know, I, I'm, I've been very surprised by because I've met some very bad dudes over my life. You understand that. I've met them about as bad as they come. But in terms of, and I've met them a lot tougher than him, much tougher, like like day and night. But in terms of the lies, I, I've never seen anybody that can lie like him. So where do you go from here? You have a debate. Again, You let, the, the, the liberal media is setting up Republican candidates against each other to make you look bad. They're dragging you into fighting with each other, and Hillary gets away with it all. What happens next, Donald? Why don't these debates come to an end already? Well, we had a debate. I, I, supposedly, I came out very well in the debate. You know, Drudge and Time Magazine, they do with these polls, and I won all the polls and did well. But, you know, it's interesting because the questions that were asked were very provocative questions, and it made uh, the other people go a little bit crazy. And I don't see those questions being asked of the Democrats. In fact, the Democrat debates are so boring I mean, they're not even watchable. But well, what about, you know, the death of Scalia? You actually commented on it during the debate. It was the first question. You certainly don't think that Hussein Obama should have the right to do an interim appointment, do you? No, I actually commented that we're going to have to make sure the Senate and Mitch McConnell holds it up. You know, we've been very disappointed in the job they do, but they have to hold it up. And I've been very strong on that. And, I'm, you know, I would appoint very, very, I actually named two judges, you know, Diane Sykes, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I named two judges that would be good, very conservative judges. And as an example, Cruz went out and said, I'm going to appoint liberal judges. I'm the only one that named judges. I mean, I will appoint conservative. But he said, Trump is going to name liberal judges. Now, how do you find, yeah, you, you know, it's... Well, you, you name William Bill Pryor Jr. and Diane Sykes. You are, you are on record for saying those are the kinds of judges who you would appoint to the Supreme Court. So how could he say you would appoint a liberal to the Supreme Court? Where does that come from? Michael, he just says it. He said, Donald Trump's going to appoint a liberal. Okay, now everyone says, oh, but we don't want that. I mean, the guy really is bad. I haven't seen anything quite like this. He said, I'm going to put, I'm the only one in the debate that talked about two people. Now, it doesn't have to be them, but they're two good examples of people you can support and, and appoint. So uh, we'll see what happens. But I heard that my news conference was well covered, and we'll get the word out. Well, I appreciate you being on the Savage Nation. Look, this is a very serious time in American history. It got much worse over the weekend, Donald. We, we had a razor-thin savior of the conservative, or shall I say traditional ways in America, Antonin Scalia, who was found dead under suspicious circumstances. And now this character in the White House who nobody with a rational mind should trust, 
is trying to railroad Loretta Lynch down our throats. That came out today as his number one choice. 